Hi, I'm Veronica Vance. Coming up, we head to American Coney Island for a Coney Dog Eating Contest, get a behind-the-scenes peek of the Grand Prix, and then we take off for Selfridge Military Air Museum, so stay tuned. Production funding for this program was made possible by the Detroit Metro Convention and Visitors Bureau, driving tourism growth in Metro Detroit since 1896. More information is available at visitdetroit.com. I'm at a downtown Detroit landmark, American Coney Island, and if you love these, this is the place to be. We're kicking off a Coney eating hot dog contest. So Grace, tell me what's going on here at American Coney Island. We're having the first annual Coney eating contest. How many Coney's you can eat in 10 minutes? And the biggest winners actually of tonight is Go Lightly Career and Technical Center. We've established a Kiros Family Fund Scholarship for the culinary students at this school. And it's so the kids of Detroit at this school that are going to the culinary world yes. will but may hopefully one day be able to stay in Detroit, open up a restaurant in Detroit, so we're giving the proceeds all to that. Oh, that's wonderful. It's so wonderful. is that, is that sort great. of what inspired it? That's what inspired it, the whole thing. A lot of people coming out for this, really happy, including you guys, thank you. And bringing some attention to downtown and kind of showing Nathan's and Coney Island in New York, like, you know what, hey, we can do it 10 times better than we can. Oh, it's exciting. So we've got three of the judges here. We've got Rick Mahorn, Shane Carson, and Ken Cockrell getting ready to kick it off. Well, the excitement in the room is just about to be kicked off, and I'm going to hand it over to Tom Constan. I want to recognize people from the Go Lightly Career and Technical Center. Woo! Ladies, raise your hand back there. I also want to take the time and recognize our celebrity judges here today. Former mayor and current Detroit City Councilman and longtime, if not lifetime, Detroit supporter, Mr. Kenneth Cockrell Jr. Woo! Former bad boy of the Detroit Pistons, the legendary Rick Mahorn. And Shane Collins from Wow Shane Wow, radio internet personality. Uh, we have another judge that's on his way. It's going to be Charlie LaDuff when he gets here in a second. We'll introduce him. They're lining up the trays here for the Coney eating challenge. And of okay. course, these are authentic Coney dogs. We've got the awesome chili from here at American Coney Island and the onions and the mustard. And they're just all that yumminess hot off the grill. They look delicious. What do you think about Coney's as the first off? I love them. I mean, it's, it's part of Detroit heritage, and you gotta always have a coney when you come in. Don't leave any on your face. Because <laughs> if you leave it on your face. Oh, come on, bro. I grew up eating these things. I've been coming to American Coney Island since I was probably about five years old. My dad used to bring me in here. Well, the main reason I'm here today is well, two reasons. One, it's a great charity helping out the DPS students, Go Lightning specifically. And then two, it's about American Coney Island and what they're doing along with the sponsors. <laughs> We are so excited that they are partnering with us and, and, and supporting our students with scholarships. This is just a wonderful thing. Thank you, Betty. Charlie, thanks for coming. This is the best restaurant in Detroit, period. All right, all right. Thank you. Thank you, Charlie. You must eat the full Coney. That's defined as a hot dog and bun with chili, mustard, and onions. But the best chili and onions and mustard and bun that you'll ever have, you know that. You must fully eat one before proceeding to the next. Only the final coney will be counted as partially eaten. Coney's still in the mouth at the end of 10 minutes count only if swallowed. Contestants who do not keep food down for a minimum of 30 seconds after the conclusion of the contest will be disqualified. All right, and finally, let me talk about the prize package. What our winner will win, a $250 gift certificate to the Somerset Collection, a gift certi certificate to Michael Simon's Roast, and we have, you get, I should say, a year's worth of free Coney lunches, one a week yeah! for a year. 15, I'm claiming it right now. I'm a strategy, just speed. Just keep going and just shoving them in. So here comes the girl. They're each starting out with one dozen per plate. And then, of course, they've got more when they finish those. Five, four, three, two, one, eat. Go, 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 go.
Oh, yeah. So we're about a minute or two into it. I don't know. Some guys are really going to town. Wow. The gentleman from Quicken in the middle. This is a close contest, I'll tell you. Unbelievable. We got some Coney lovers here, that's for sure. Savor every bite. Five, four, three. Slow down two, one. Go! Time! Larry, come here. And, or, no, stay there. Stay there. I, and I'll stay here. <laughs> On the other side of the table. First of all, let me congratulate everybody here. I think they deserve a big round of applause. That was a hell of an effort. Thank you all. Thank you all contestants. So Larry is the official winner. Right. Ten and a half hot dogs Leslie, in ten minutes. He's about to get the hot time, dog trophy. How does it feel to be the first Pony Dog winner? Uh, it, feels, it feels good. I'm, I'm a little full. Uh, probably not going to eat dinner tonight, but... <laughs> but yeah, you, get a, you get a little... little thanks, thanks for that. <laughs> no, you're going to go home and put this up on your mantle? Uh, actually, it's going uh, going to my desk at work. All my co-workers came out to support me. It's it's going right on the desk at Quicken Loans. It's going to support my team. Now, you had a big cheering section. Do you think that helped to lead to your success? Yeah. I did, absolutely. It was, it was a mental thing. I knew everyone was behind me. I had the crowd. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. I appreciate it. So there you have it. American Coney Island, a Detroit landmark since 1917. And you don't need to have a Coney Dog Eating Challenge to taste some of the best dogs in town. Well, it's quiet here on Belle Isle now, but in just a few weeks, this place is going to be booming with excitement as the Grand Prix races into town. And we're going to take a behind-the-scenes peek to see what it takes to put on this phenomenal event. So check out all the tire burn marks behind me. As you look down the lane, you can see where all the cars have pulled out and burnt rubber. This is the pit crew area, and this is where the magic happens on race day. It's intense, it's exciting, it's right here in front of the grandstands. Now, what they do is they pull up here, they've got seven seconds, or ideally five and a half seconds, to change four tires, fill them up with gas, and then they pull out and get back in the race. And the reason they want to get as close to five and a half seconds as possible, because that one extra second can cost you 380 feet. <laughs> Well, this is cool. You can come out here and actually drive in Belle Isle before the race happens, and you get to see what the race car drivers see. Of course, you drive the track at a much slower pace. This area behind me used to be grass, and it's called the paddock area, but come race weekend, it's going to be full of trucks bringing in the race cars. And to protect the grass so that it doesn't get ruined from all those big, heavy trucks, they put in over $3 million worth of cement. Now this big area behind me is called the technical paddock and this is where they bring in all the race cars and they tune them up. If there's any problems, they fix them here. Again, this is all cement is laid down so that we're preserving the grass of Belle Isle and making it great for race day. So one of the cool behind the scenes looks of the Grand Prix here in Belle Isle is getting to see where the corporate sponsors watch the race from. They are actually raised up off the ground so that their feet don't have to touch the ground in case it rains. But that's also cool for Belle Isle because they're preserving the grass for us to enjoy the rest of the year. So come on up here with me. So these are the chalets that are put up for the corporate sponsors. So they're up here, they're whining and dining, and imagine cars coming around the racetrack, 170, 200 miles an hour, zooming by as they're up here whining and dining. Well, Bud, it's really exciting to be here on Belle Isle and watch the transformation. Can you tell me, like, what goes on to get ready for the Grand Prix? Well, to put on a world-class event like this takes a lot of preparation, a lot of time, and as you see around us, a heck of a lot of work. And for eight weeks before the race, we'll get into full mode of operation mode and build a racetrack from scratch. Every year we have to leave, 
and come back and build an entirely new racetrack. What are some of the things that they're doing? Are they repaving some of the roads, touching up? I mean, what what's going on? All of the above. <laughs> every every year we put new improvements to Belle Isle, and, <laughs> and one of the big reasons of bringing the race back to Detroit was to improve Belle Isle, improve it for its citizens, for the state, uh, for our entire area, <laughs> because Belle Isle needs some help. So we're repaving re roads, we're fixing lighting, we're fixing the Scott Fountain, we're fixing the casino. We're going to repaint it again. The casino is 105 years old. It needs some help. A lot of property here needs help. Those are all the improvements we're going to make on the Belle Isle. We're also going to build a racetrack. And behind us, you see our chalets. You see fencing and barrier wall. It takes about 40 million pounds of barrier walls to bring on the island wow. to keep those cars from going into anywhere else besides the racetrack. Mm -hmm. Four miles of fence, and all this construction goes on every year. So, but how many people does it take to pull this whole thing off? Well, right now, between now and, and uh, the event, which is just you know, days away, mm -hmm. uh, it takes about 200 people full time. So those people are, are employed now. They're working down here fully on, on our payroll to put the event on. But that weekend of the event will take about 2,000 employees here to pull it off. Caterers, people taking care of our customers, people in the merchandise areas. We have a huge concert stage to put out there for great acts every night. That's right. I forgot. You've got, besides the race, there's a whole other area that's going on of entertainment and bouncies and for big kids and little kids alike, right? We'll have a Meyer Family Fun Zone because it's really a family atmosphere yeah. we want to create here. In fact, on PNC Free Day, we'll have about 40,000 people down here for free. Bring your family, bring your kids, see the racing action, qualifying racing going on, but also enjoy that night Mitch Ryder on the wheels and on the concert stage. We'll have B-52s in concert one night. We'll have Ronnie Dunn from Brooks and Dunn in concert on Sunday afternoon. A lot going on in our area, a lot for families to see, entertainment, but also a lot going on in the racetrack. The fact that you're giving the whole Belle Isle a facelift and then you're leaving it for everybody else to enjoy, I think that's really commendable what you guys are doing. That's so important to our mm -hmm. mission. Our, our mission is to give back to Detroit. Yeah. You know, I work for Roger Penske. Yeah. He's all about Detroit, all about our region, giving back. Yeah. Uh, we consider Belle Isle our backyard. Mm -hmm. and we want our backyard to look really nice. Mm -hmm. But because we're here the first of June, the rest of the summer, the citizens of Detroit can use this wonderful area. We fixed it up, we've got it looking great again, and we're back again next year to make it look even better. So the Scott Fountain is getting a facelift again, thanks to the Grand Prix. <laughs> right, absolutely. It's our, uh, it's our third time cleaning the fountain, polishing it. We have workers there right now preparing it, putting new lights in, uh, really making it look great for the rest of the year because it needs some work. Part of the give back that we make to Belle Isle. Which brings up a good point too, that the, not only what you're doing to Belle Isle, but what you're doing to the city, bringing in visitors from all around coming to see the Grand Prix here. So important. Yeah. We'll have 100,000 people come across the MacArthur Bridge to our event each and every year. We also have five hours of TV coverage to showcase our city and our waterfront to millions of people around the world, not just here in the U.S., but around the world. You can't buy that kind of coverage. And importantly for our region, the economic benefit. Those jobs I talked about are important, but also putting people in our casinos, our hotels, our restaurants, bringing them down to the waterfront will add about $50 million of benefit to our region that weekend. So it's a huge weekend. It means a lot of reasons to have it back besides the roar of cars on Belle Isle. Yeah giving back, but also giving back to our communities economically. Well, bud, I can't wait till Grand Prix weekend. <laughs> Thank you. It's great to be on the show, but it's also great to have you here in Detroit and helping us out, and we look forward to seeing hundreds of thousands of people down here uh, in the first week of June. Got my seat reserved for the Grand Prix here on Belle Isle, and I can't wait to hear the roar of the engines. There are plenty of things to see and do in Metro Detroit this month and our calendar of events is up next to point you in the right direction. Go organic at Plymouth's annual Green Street Fair and spend a day out with Thomas at Greenfield Village. Create a one-of-a-kind gift for mom at the Glass Academy, then help Kid Rock save the Detroit Symphony. Pagliacci tells the tragic tale of a clown and superheroes save the day at the Motor City Comic Con. Catch a ride to Frankenmuth with Motor City Brew Tours, then discover fine art at the village of Rochester Hills. Eastern Market's Flower Day is one of the largest flower shows in the country, and Art Birmingham celebrates its 31st year. Hart Plaza welcomes Movement, the Electronic Music Festival, and World Class Racing returns to roar through the streets of Belle Isle. To learn of any changes, log on to visitdetroit.com or call 1-800-DETROIT.
Metro Detroit has one of the oldest and largest National Guard bases in the country, and it's here, just outside of Mount Clemens, where you'll find the Selfridge Military Air Museum. They've got an inside exhibit that takes you through different wartime eras, and then, of course, they've got the El Primo exhibit out here, where they've got like 27 different aircrafts on display. You can get up close, you can touch them, take pictures, and two of them you can even go inside. Well, thank you for coming out yeah. here. We've been out here now for about 30 years. Uh, we're a private organization on the base. We think it's important to preserve the history of this now 90-year-old installation. We're open to the general public mm -hmm. from noon to 4.30 on weekends, Memorial Day and Independence Day between April and October. Okay. And throughout the year, day, night, during the week, uh, by appointment for groups. We're in right now what we call the air park portion of the complex. This is where we display vintage military airplanes going all the way back to World War II. Outside we also have some vintage military vehicles, some Nike missiles, and the air park is coupled with the inside of the museum which displays artifacts and memorabilia going all the way back oh. uh, prior to World War I when this place was known as the Joy Aviation Field. So shall we start our tour inside? Absolutely, okay. let's go. Before we start inside the museum, I thought I'd show you uh, the big effort uh, that the museum volunteers are working on mm -hmm. now. This is going to be a historically accurate replica of a World War I fighter plane wow. called the SPAD-13. We've arranged the inside of our museum to flow chronologically from information about the base's namesake, Thomas Selfridge, okay. a model of the airplane he was in when he became the first person to die in a powered airplane crash. Wow. This that area in here is our World War I area, uh, the kind of engines that powered the airplanes uh, they flew. And the kind of wooden propeller? Wooden My propellers. My goodness, yep. it's beautiful. Yep. World War II area. Uh, weapons, engines. This is the kind of engine that was used to power, power the P-51 Mustang. This is uh, one of our pride and joys. It's a cutaway uh, Pratt & Whitney R-2800 engine. Uh, our long-term goal is to motorize this so you'll be able to see the prop shaft turn and wow. the cylinders go up and down. Air traffic control display. A Vietnam era Jeep. And we allow guests to you know, sit inside there, and I always ask which one is Colonel Potter and which one is Radar O'Reilly. <laughs> From an interest standpoint, the, the best display we have, it's yeah. the, the cockpit of an F-16 jet fighter. And as you can see from that young man in there, he is having a blast. He is having a ball. Compass, airspeed indicator, these three screens are what the pilots use to track airplanes to look out ahead and see what the weather is like. Hello. She looks just like Tom Cruise, doesn't she? <laughs> she takes my breath spin. away. I'm going to do a spin. <laughs> okay, back out to the marvelous section, the air park. This is so impressive. Now, but this isn't a plane. What is this? This is a mobile air traffic control tower so voices come out of speakers they're not a recording it's the real air traffic controllers at Selfridge talking to real pilots in the area. What is this big baby here? <laughs> this is a, a C-130 its nickname is the Hercules. Hercules I love the name. I flew this particular airplane. You flew this plane? I flew this plane. Wow. We're in the uh, business end of the C-130. We've configured it to show what the C-130 can carry. Vehicles, stretchers, the paratroop Cute. doors opened on the side. That's where the paratroopers jump out. And welcome to the flight deck of the C-130. You'll have a seat there in the left-hand seat where the aircraft commander sits. This oh. is, so this is where you sat 
When you flew the That's plane. That's where I sat when I flew it. I'll sit in the co-pilot seat. In between us is a, a flight engineer seat. And back over there is where the navigator sits. The instruments, <laughs> instruments in front of the yeah. pilot and the co-pilot are flight instruments, uh, how fast you're going, how high you're flying. And this is where it's, uh, the whole operation is run from. Wow. One of the uh, things we're very proud of here at our museum is that, first of all, we have airplanes from all branches of the service. We have the F-4 Phantom II that was flown a lot during Vietnam. As you can see by the nose of the airplane, yeah. restoration of airplanes is a big issue for us. Uh, the A-26 Invader, which was a bomber. That was originally flown in World War II, wow. then in Korea, and then, believe it or not, they even modified some of them to fly during Vietnam. Marine Corps Corsair that flew out of uh, Gros Eel. I think the most touching moment for me involves this airplane. Yeah. When a wow. World War II veteran who flew this airplane mm -hmm. was out here with his grandson. Aww. They walked up to the airplane and Grandpa just touched oh, it. Oh, that's so sweet. It makes I you know. want to cry. <laughs> I know. I thought I saw a tear yeah. coming in his eye. Oh, so, yeah, wow. that was, this was a pretty special airplane for that guy. This uh, Navy F-14 Tomcat is the latest addition to our air park displays. This is the airplane that was featured in Top Gun with yeah. Tom Cruise. Okay. Navy A-4. It was the A-4 that Senator John McCain was in when he was shot down over oh. North Vietnam. Oh, wow. One of the two airplanes that we like to open up on weekends mm -hmm. is this large Navy P-3 Orion. Its job was to go out and fly over the oceans and look for enemy submarines. So let's go inside and I'll turn you over to somebody that flew it. Chief, all right. Hi. So Hi. tell me a little bit about the about the aircraft then. Well, the aircraft was a uh, anti-submarine warfare. That was a primary mission, but it also mm -hmm. did surface surveillance. It go out. It was uh, one of the aircraft that uh, discovered the uh, missiles during the uh, Cuban Missile Crisis. Oh, really? Yeah. Right here is where the sensor operators sit. Okay. And they grabbed all the signals from the sonar buoys that were put out. Oh, here was the tactical coordinator. And he would uh, ask for all the information from the sensor operators and mm -hmm. project it here. The navigator, he kept located, knowing where we were and plotted. You, you built them, so did you get to fly it too? Flew it. I got uh, over 10,000 hours in it. As an engineer, I would keep an eye on the engines and the systems and the mm -hmm. fuel of the aircraft. Well, I want to thank you thank so much you for, for coming out. Taking me around. Thank you for showing you. me off. And I've had a great afternoon here at the Selfridge Military Air Museum. Again, they're open weekends, April through October. Great way to spend a Saturday, Sunday afternoon. <laughs>
Well, that's our show. Thanks for watching. I'm Veronica Vance. And remember, if you'd like more information on any of the places we visited, log on to visitdetroit.com. So until I see you next time, go out and explore on your own and discover the D. To learn about discounts and special offers for featured attractions, plus how to get copies of Visit Detroit magazine, click on visitdetroit.com. Production funding for this program was made possible by the Detroit Metro Convention and Visitors Bureau, driving tourism growth in Metro Detroit since 1896. More information is available at visitdetroit.com.